Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me again. Today we're doing luxury unpopular opinion slash rants because I have a bunch of things that I want to kind of chat about. Um, I asked you guys on Instagram to tell me your luxury rants and you did. I'm so here for it. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. We have a lot to get through. Um, let me start off with my rants slash luxury unpopular opinions and I'll react to yours. Um, my first really unpopular opinion is don't ask for people's big H essay contact information in any market in the world. Um, this is something that's happening a lot. It happens on the press forum. It happens in Facebook groups. Um, some of you have told me that people have asked you um, for big H essay, you know, contact info. Um, I just don't think that it is something that you should really be asking people for. I'm going to tell you why. I think it actually creates a lot of jealousy and stress when people ask for people's um, essay contact info. You might see someone get really good offers or you maybe see it in a Facebook group that someone gets really great offers and you're like, I'm going to ask that person for their essay contact info. They, they'll give you their essay contact info, but what if that person is spending $200,000 a year? Um, so they're getting really fantastic, incredible offers. Well, of course they are. They're spending $200,000 a year. They're spending 150,000 euros a year. What if then you start struggling? That person might feel awkward, like, okay, well, how come my essay isn't delivering um, for that person? Another thing is don't ask people for their Parisian essay um, contact. Um, in many Facebook groups, I see this all the time. People say, hey guys, I'm trying to like get the contact info for an essay in Paris because I want to buy shoes and I want to know if my shoe number's there. First of all, Paris is the flagship motherland baby for the horse, AKA Big H. Why would you need an essay's contact info for um, buying shoes in Paris in any of the three Parisian um, boutiques. And I swear, I'm not wearing Big H orange because we're talking about Big H even though this is Ralph Lauren. I'm just saying like, why do you need that contact info? I've seen people say this many times, like, hey, I'm heading, I'm headed to Paris. Can I have the, the info of an essay in, in one of the three um, Parisian stores? No one who shops in Paris seriously is giving a stranger the contact info for their essay in Paris. Whether that person's at FSH, Sevres, George Sank, no one who is serious about shopping in Paris is give, going to give you that um, information cold. Not even someone you know can willingly give up that information. I want to kind of explain why. Paris is a different breed. It's where the the biggest spenders of, of all of the big H boutiques in the world come to shop and get really unique items. It is also the place where there are a lot of tourists who have cash to burn, who also want to play the game and see if they can score a big H quota bag. It is actually very competitive. I don't know why people think Paris is um, not competitive. It's incredibly competitive. No one is giving you their big H Paris essay info. Since I went in January up until today, I've heard from many people who have failed, many people who have been successful. And let me tell you something, I have never asked anyone who has succeeded or failed, can I have the um, like information of your essay because you told me you got this Birkin, this Kelly, this Constance. I have never requested that. Let me tell you why. I haven't requested it because first of all, it's not good big H etiquette. And number two, you, know, you get me, I'm a big girl, honey, okay? I pay my own bills. I can go to Big H on my own. I can get I can get my own essay after playing the Big H Parisian game, okay? So I think it's just super important to um, acknowledge that. I know that for many of you, you might be like, well, I'm, I would give, I would give like my friend, my Big H um, essay contact, like, like let's say you've already scored twice or three times, you would give your friend. Well, that's you and you have to think okay i'm going to give my friend my essay contact info what if your friend gets a mini kelly and you've been waiting for five years for a mini kelly your friend gets one in four months hmm? 
what's that going to do? Forget about what that's going to do to your friendship, which will create pressure, whether people want to admit it or not, because shopping at Big H is so competitive. It will definitely create resentment between you and your SA. It's not worth it. Um, those of you who are big spenders, if you know someone else who is going to come to the boutique and spend a lot of money, it maybe might be worth it. I personally don't think it's worth it unless you are all um, big spenders. Um, for example, God forbid, for example, in terms of Paris, let me just talk about what is relevant to me, which is always Paris. Let's say I was to go to Paris, um, okay, which I am going in autumn winter. Let's say I'm successful, yeah, this time round. And let's say I'm offered two quota bags. Let's say one of you contacts me and says, hey, Kagem, I saw you were successful in Paris this winter. Can you tell me the name of your essay um, so I can contact them because I would like to score a quota bag? If I have spent, I'm just speaking hypothetically, I'm not saying I'm going to spend this amount. Let's say I go to Paris and I spend 45,000 euros, okay, on diamond fine jewelry, okay, on exotic SLGs, crocorans. I'm trying to think about the things that, that I like and a diamond watch. How much do you think you should be spending then? If I spend 45K, how much would you need to spend if my SA knows that, okay, this client can spend 45K or this client can spend 20K or this client can spend 30K, whatever the amount is. If I spend 20,000 euros, 30,000 euros, 45,000 euros, how much do you think you need to spend? you will need to spend either 45,000 euros or more so that I don't look crazy to my SA. God forbid I give you the contact info. Again, this is all hypothetical. I give you the contact info and then you go to the SA and the SA is excited thinking, yeah, you know, Kagem, like she dropped a, a, you know, she dropped a bag, honey. She blew a bag, etc. And then you go there and then you spend like, you know, like, 200 euros buying silks and twillies and a nail varnish that could be very very humiliating and very embarrassing not just for you but for me as well this is all hypothetical okay don't panic you <laughs> will see what i end up spending when i go um this autumn winter i have no idea how much i'm going to spend i've been thinking about it lately um it's going to be a closely guarded secret what i spend i'm just giving a number right what if you end up spending 200 and that doesn't mean that you don't have money to spend you might just not want to give big h in paris 10k 20k 30k 40k you can see now how that can get very uncomfortable for everyone god forbid you sp you spend less than me and then it ends up kind of humiliating me whether you guys admit it or not the essay will feel like kagem's like you know judgment isn't good she came here and blew a bag, but she's bringing people who are not spending money. This is a waste of my time. Let me go find people who are going to spend money. It's not worth asking for people's big H SA info, wherever you are in the world, especially Paris. Do not ask people for their big H SA contacts. Um, don't do it. Um, maybe you follow people on Instagram, maybe you follow people on TikTok. Don't ask people for their big H SA contacts. If I haven't been clear enough, it puts everyone in an awkward position. It creates a lot of je jealousy and competition and it, it ends up becoming quite stressful for everyone involved. Okay. So that's like my rant slash very unpopular luxury opinion. My next super unpopular luxury opinion is, okay, do not compare um, quota offers um, that you get with other people's offers that you see on Instagram and TikTok. I've told you guys before, I'm not an influencer, okay? I don't see myself as an influencer. I don't brand myself as an influencer. I'm just not an influencer. I have a career. I have a normal job. But this channel is fun and this luxury so social media stuff is hobby. Let me tell you, okay? Many people who do luxury social media as a hobby or as a career can create a very curated image of their offers and of the things that they own, okay? You you guys saw my, the Range Rover reveal that I had on the channel. That's our car that we own. It's, it's not financed. I remember someone left a comment like that on that video and then deleted it like, oh, but I bet you took a loan for that car. I'm like, go bye. Okay, that car was purchased cash, baby. Okay, that car is owned for, like outright, but you can see how people can think that because people can create very curated images on social media. That's the same thing with people's offers. You're following people on Instagram. Honestly, I don't follow any of the big H people that you guys follow on Instagram. I don't, I even follow big H on Instagram, honey. Like, my interests on Instagram are like, like, um, honestly, I was even trying to think the other day, like, I follow like 
celebrities like Nicki Minaj do I even follow Nicki I think I follow Nicki on my like personal account like and I look for like wigs and hair and I look at like lipstick colors on social media like I, I could care less about what people are being offered from Big H even though I cover Big H very often on this channel don't stress yourself out um, looking at people's offers and comparing your offers to other people's offers okay it's not healthy because you don't know how much that person is spending I remember one of you you sent me the profile of a big H VIP um, I don't I don't follow this person I was just sent the profile I don't I don't even I, I literally was just like okay whatever and um, one of you sent me the profile of this individual and this person has got some really fantastic offers but as usual you know me honey I look at all of the pictures the person is literally swimming in big H fine jewelry and big H high jewelry pieces boo boo okay that is why that person is getting fantastic offers you cannot look at someone like that which is clearly a big H V V I P, and then compare your offers to someone who's spending you know 400,000 euros a year um, buying fine jewelry and high jewelry um, pieces if you go and spend 250,000 euros a year or dollars a year buying high jewelry and fine jewelry you better believe you're going to be getting anything that you want don't compare your offers you don't know how much people are spending even people who say they're not spending you have no idea what those people are shop like buying there's a lot of stress at the moment when it pertains to this brand because people become incredibly competitive when it pertains to talking about big H and to talking about big H offers that's something that I've noticed um, and some of you do get really really stressed out by that because you maybe you're following a youtuber you're following an influencer or, or an Instagrammer or someone on TikTok and you're like well that person gets all these great offers and I haven't gotten a great offer you don't know honey how much money that person is spending in the boutique so there's no way for you to like really um kind of gauge whether that person's really getting great offers it's so easy to create a curated image I could go to Paris this winter what if I get those two quota bags but what if I I turn around and come on the channel and say hey guys I'm not gonna say my ratio but I really here we go saying something I hate I really clicked with the essay and we became friends and I feel like the essay really likes me because we clicked and I got these two quota offers I'm just speaking randomly two quota offers is very rare um, but I'm not going to say how much I spent. I'm not going to say even the categories that I purchased in. I'm not even going to give you an idea of the ratio because you know what? It doesn't really matter, you guys. Buy what you love and it's all about clicking with the essay. You're going to get the impression like, wow, I didn't really spend anything. But what if I bought a bunch of diamond fine jewelry that I don't post on Instagram or TikTok, but I wear it when I go um, to church with my husband, but I wear it when I go to my mom's crib to say hi to mom okay only people in tanzania would be like hey i saw again at st peter's the other day she had a diamond parfait bracelet bangle on or something i'm just speaking out loud here but you get what i'm saying don't compare your offers to people you see on social media it's so easy to create a very curated image on social media that doesn't tell the full story it's only when you really follow people or you look at the pictures that people post particularly on instagram is where you really see like oh that person has you know croc kelly wallets croc kelly wallets in the us are fifteen thousand dollars they're ten thousand euros in um in the eu that's a lot of money honey and that absolutely counts for like really fantastic um, offers from the horse so don't compare your offers to other people you have no idea what people are spending even if people don't want to share um their ratios and all of this all right I want to talk about another annoying thing that people do um, again unfortunately this is all big H stuff <laughs> okay but one really really annoying thing that people do in the big H community I can't even drag big H for this because I don't even really think it's big H but this kind of like cloak and dagger you know secrecy around what people buy at the boutique in order to create really in order to create really strong profiles in order to get fantastic offers it's so cloak and dagger i feel like i'm a character in the house of dragons the series which is you know the prequel to game of thrones those of you who are team game of thrones you know what time it is i've been watching it with edwin edwin and i've been watching it like every week since it's come out and there's so much intrigue and literally when i was watching the episode um the one that's just come out now i was thinking about the sort of intrigue and shenanigans that go on in the big H shopping community notice what I said the shopping community around big H not necessarily big H 
people have all this intrigue i feel like i'm a character literally in the house in the house of the targaryens i literally feel like i'm a character except i'm black and i don't have blonde hair but you get what i'm saying like i feel like a character in this series because there's so much intrigue people don't want to talk about people don't even want to say what categories they shop from i see this in groups i see this in forums like someone will be like hey like um do you mind telling me what your pre-spend was like in a facebook group or whatever because there are a ton of big h facebook groups hey i don't really think it matters like everyone has a different journey and i've noticed that people say everyone's journey is different in order to silence the people who have questions in groups particularly you see this in a lot of facebook groups like someone will be like hey do you mind telling me what your pre-spend was you don't have to say the number you could say my pre-spend was 1.2 we all know that means 1.2 to 1. you could say my pre-spend i don't want to say exactly how much it was but it was between three and four we all know that means three to one four to one and creating all of this intrigue what it does is it just it makes people feel so afraid to even shop from the brand um you know so many times we talk about who can afford to shop at big h and who can shop at big h and there's so many people who watch this channel so many people in the luxury community who can shop at big h today and buy bait and everything but many of you are like hey i don't even know how to get started because i don't even know what is going on in my local boutique and that was like one of the things that inspired me when when i came back from paris in january was to continue posting about big h because i hated the sort of cloak and dagger gatekeeperish like mystery around this brand it drove me absolutely mad that people don't want to share good information to other people because they want to keep people away from the brand as a way to like gatekeep the brand for the people who deserve the offers some of this stuff is becoming quite sick to be honest um and it's kind of out, outside the scope of this channel because a lot of this you could make this into like a social commentary on like within the luxury community like why do some people want to keep other people out you know and some of it can get a little bit too much so that is one of my gripes slash rants slash really unpopular opinions if you don't want to like share your pre-spend you don't have to let's just be clear no one is owed that information i'm not owed at this point i pretty much know what pre-spend is for most countries in europe the reason why this stuff really annoys me is because to me the cloak and dagger intrigue of shopping at Big H is just another form of gatekeeperism um, and keeping people away from the brand because you don't want people to shop at the brand for whatever reason. We can get into that into in another video, like why some people who shop at certain brands don't want other people um, shopping there. Um, as far as I'm concerned and the way I kind of see things is like... Um, in terms of like the information pertaining to say what are the categories to shop in what are the things that people should be buying when you tell someone buy what you love unfortunately that is a form of you gatekeeping this brand whether you're doing it intentionally or not isn't really the point it is a form of gatekeeping if i had known that you know diamond fine jewelry was so important and that like diamond watches was so important in january um i definitely would have taken a different um i would have taken a different approach and i would have thought about things much differently had i known how important building a profile was in paris i would have um done so um but at the time the information that i had from forums and groups was that it didn't matter what you spent it didn't matter your profile it didn't it didn't it didn't but actually the reality on the ground is um yeah it does matter and there is a prison game but i don't blame anyone for that and i'm not blaming anyone all i'm saying is the sort of cloak and dagger mystery around big h is a form of gatekeeperism um these kind of big h cliches that's another one of my rants you know buy what you love um every journey is different blah 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 um you know to me that's just that's just a smoke screen for i don't want to help you understand your market um of course people should buy things that they like and that they're really really excited about that 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 goes without saying i don't live in a country with a big h boutique so i need to score extremely extremely fast um in order to get my offer for me now there's some of you who um live in countries that have many big h boutiques so that you, you can afford to take that slow um steady approach um so i just i just want um the luxury community the people who shop at big h specifically 
If you don't want to say your ratio, you do not have to. You don't have to say your pre-spend ratio. But if you're in a group and someone says, hey, I'm trying to build my profile, I'd like to get a fast offer. Don't tell that person buy what you love. Tell that person the tea, honey, and tell them what we all know, which is there's certain categories that really help you build a super strong profile at the horse. Tell them the tea and tell them the truth. Don't tell someone buy what you love. I mean, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything anymore in the big H um, universe. Um, we don't do that here. That's not a glamazonism with a Z that we condone here, honey. Um, we'll always keep it Gucci on here. Um, and I will always keep it Gucci. If you send me a DM on Instagram, we're having a private conversation, I'll keep it Gucci with you. Um, and there are many of you who said, hey, I don't like, you know, fine jewelry. Okay, cool. You don't like fine jewelry. Fine. Do you like watches? No. Okay, well, you know, it's going to be a slow burn in a very competitive location if you don't like those things. Um, not everyone has like a big H fairy. Um, you know, like the, the very famous phrase, like a big H fairy, like an essay that doesn't make you go one to one. To me, a, a big H fairy is someone who doesn't make someone go one to one or spend a ton of money. Not everyone has um, that situation. If you have that situation, that's great. But most people um, will be going one to one, two to one, frankly, three to one in some really competitive markets. People will be going there. I think there's a lot of cloak and dagger. Um, there's a lot of cloak and dagger activity in the shopping community of Big H. People don't want to talk about their offers. People don't want to talk about how they get their offers. They don't, they don't, they don't even want to say how many months it's taken them to get an offer. Even little information like that plays a massive role. By the way, I have a new bait video coming soon, so I'm working on that. And I just want us to just operate with a little bit more transparency. Of course, there's a limit to how much you can talk about when it pertains to Big H, particularly if you're public. I mean, I don't have a home store. There's no Big H boutique in Africa. So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm offending anyone or saying anything out of turn because there's no boutique in my own motherland, right? So I understand that some of you might be like, okay, well, I don't want to share anything or get in trouble or whatever. But in a lot of groups that are private, people still ask like a question like, hey, can you PM me this information? Hey, you know, focus on your own journey, buy what you love. It doesn't matter. Pre-spend doesn't matter. And then literally you go on the person's Instagram, it's rammed with big hate bait. I want us to be a little bit more Gucci. Let's keep it Gucci on here when it pertains to Big Cage and the game. And if someone, if you're in a social media group or you're on Instagram and someone is asking for help, reach out to that person privately and be like, hey, this is the tea. I shop at your boutique. You were asking this question. This is actually the tea of the situation, not buy what you love. Because at this point, that is a cliche that actually doesn't mean anything and it doesn't help anyone at all. Or if someone just loves buying Bastiers, are they going to get a bag offer? I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. So let's not <laughs> let's not do that. Those I would say are my main, like really unpopular um, luxury opinions slash rants um, that I wanted to share. In case any pop up, I'll mention them. But now I wanted to react to yours because yours were um, even. I think yours yours were like even more. Um, interesting for me because there's so many really annoying things that people do in these um, shopping communities so um, fit foodie says um, because I did an Instagram stick I was like tell me your luxury ranks <laughs> fit foodie says people who say luxury is over and they're moving from big C to big H they still have to spend money yeah luxury is not over I think it's really like um, I think it's really like narrow-minded to say luxury is over and I think it's quite self-important just to try and announce that these things are over. Um, I think luxury isn't has changed a lot. Um, these brands are really enjoying doing games. Don't forget this is just luxury fashion. There are all kinds of luxury. Luxury hotels, there's luxury travel and all these types of things. Um, but yeah, luxury is not over. I agree with you on that. They're moving from big C to big H. Moving from big C to big H is not a joke. Are you ready to play the big H game, honey? Are people ready to drop $20,000 buying bait? I mean, people need to ask themselves these questions. Are you ready? Because the way people say it, like, oh, I'm leaving Chanel, I'm going to Big H. Are you going to buy bait there? Because in 2022, honey, you'll be buying bait. If you were not shopping since 2015, the people who were shopping in 2015, 2016, they um, are, are not going to be... I feel like they just don't have it as hard as people who started shopping this year or last year. Um... 
The next one is from Wangu. I need a concession store in East Africa. I don't want to have to travel to buy Lux. I know how you feel. Um, Wangu's in Kenya. I'm in Tanzania, so we're neighboring countries. We're like brother and sister. We both, um, both Kenyans and Tanzanians, we speak the same language, which is Swahili. Um, I know how you feel about not wanting to travel. Honestly, my life is here, you know. Sometimes I get troll comments from trolls who don't understand anything about my life in Tanzania, my life in Africa, my life in an African country. And it's like, well, if you if you love luxury so much and you if you have the means and you have the money, like go travel. Who's going traveling to do luxury shopping every single month? Like I have a career, I have a company, I have employees, I have my marriage here, I have my family here, honey. Like who who's going to be doing that every month? It would be very convenient to have it here, but you and I, we both know that's not going to happen. Um, South Africa's our best chance. Um, I love South Africa, by the way, and I love Jan's bike. Lee says people should stop taking um, H offers if they don't um, slash never really cared for. I totally agree. Like, stop taking big H offers and then putting them in Facebook groups or putting them on Rodeo File to resell um, for um, extra money. I don't understand how you can buy a big H bag that you don't want, whether it's a quota offer or a non-quota offer. I think if it's a fantastic offer, you should take a great offer. Um, but I think you, I don't understand the people who are buying things that they literally do not want. I don't like the color blue. I'm not accepting a blue Birkin or Kelly or Constance. I don't like that color, I'm not gonna wear it. Why would I accept it? Just because it's from Big H? I mean, that is so odd to me. Mummy Lux in Life says, that I can't get a mini square or top handle <laughs> or classic flat from Chanel um, sent to my house anymore. Big C is not playing, girl. Big C says, go into the boutique and buy ready to wear and find jewelry. Okay, Big C is speaking her own Chanel glyph attorney and that is what she wants you to do. CPA Lux Lover says, not every um, bag with a strap needs to be worn crossbody. I agree, and particularly if you're curvy like me, I'm curvy and I have a big bust, like crossbody does not look good if you're busty and curvy. I don't know, and I hope no one's offended. Um, there's certain there's certain bags when they're cross-bodied, it just kind of cuts you in half. I don't know how to explain it. I agree. Not every single um, bag needs to be, you know, uh, cross-bodied. I totally agree with that. Something else which I kind of wanted to talk about, which is just another super annoying, like a, another super annoying luxury rant that I have is, guys, can we stop? Can we just put the whole Chanel trying to be a mess thing in 2021? Some of you are still saying this. Um, I, I don't think Big C cares of, about Big H Honey and her massive problems with resellers and all of the bots that are on um, Big H's um, website. Some of you who are trying to get non quota bags from Big H, like you can't even purchase anything on there. Let these two brilliant French houses be great. They're both great, they're both brilliant, they're just very different and I don't understand why people are so focused on you can only like one it's okay to like both and it's okay to accept both for the for the great things that each one has I'm sorry I'm sorry I like the fact that you can go into a Chanel boutique and you can pretty much buy anything you don't have to buy bait for now kind of depending on the ready-to-wear situation like Big H is not an easy brand to shop from I, I actually have a theory that Big H is kind of trying to get rid of people just walking into the boutique. Like they really want people to have appointments and to have essays and to come into the boutique and um, build relationships and, and things like that. I mean, it is not an easy house to shop from to shop from I beg your pardon. Even for me, I mean the fact that I live in Tanzania, I have to think, oh, uh, you know, I'm going to go to Paris and then I have to do this and then I have to get my husband on board, then we have to go to this boutique and then we have to do this. It's not an easy brand to shop from so you guys were tough on big c honey give her a break because she is not making you go one-to-one -one in order to buy a chanel 19 i do think that is an important um, thing i'd love to know what you guys's luxury rants slash luxury unpopular opinions are i would absolutely love to hear, um, hear back from you guys on this issue please make sure you like comment share and subscribe to my channel um i have a video coming about really cool things that you can buy from other brands like bottega prada gucci balenciaga would you like to see that video because there's some really beautiful things from other houses other houses are bringing the fire honey okay there's so much 
gorgeous stuff um, and I don't want you guys to miss out so I'd love to know if you'd be interested in more like shopping videos where I edit like cool things that I think you should buy if you guys are interested in those you let me know I did that watch video I thought that video was going to fail I didn't think anyone was going to watch it ah see what I did there but a bunch of you did watch it so that's really good so let me know if you want to see more things like that because that's kind of the direction I want to take my channel I want to focus more on like all kinds of luxury not just like the top three brands because that can get so boring after a while I want to talk about like luxury travel luxury hotels luxury property luxury cars would you like to see a video on like the best luxury cars for women that is very much my thing honey because I love cars so please let me know if you want to see different types of luxury I think it gets so boring just talking about the same luxury houses all the time and I don't know it can get a bit boring after a while does that make sense I'd love to know what you guys think about that maybe that's like another unpopular opinion there's so many other great houses out there don't pigeonhole yourself to one house that's something that I'm seeing happening a lot now in um, in, in the luxury space people just shop from Big H they just shop from Louis Vuitton or they just shop from Chanel shop from many different brands there's so much to see to see out there i would love to know what you guys think about everything please make sure that you're fully subscribed and you join my facebook group it's linked below some of you were like is the group private yes the group is private um so go join below no one no one who knows you in your private facebook life will see anything that you're posting in the group um but if you don't have facebook go follow me on instagram and also um go follow my tiktok and i have my blog as well which is linked below and i'm working on an email newsletter that will be going out like once a month i need to know if anyone is going to be interested in getting my glamazon email will you be interested in that it'll be like coming out once a month it'll be kind of more of the same like cool things that you can go and buy um honestly i love just like finding cool things for people to buy and things like that so it'll be more things like that you will let me know if you're interested in that because i'm working on basically getting that ready not right now though because I'm really busy doing other things but I'd love to know so don't forget to tell me all of your luxury opinions slash rants there's a lot to keep up with this in, in this video thank you so 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 much for watching and I'll see you very soon um, in my next video